गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स नमस्कार यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग अस ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर टेन एंड आई एम कुसुम प्रसाद सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स दिस सेशन इज फॉर क्लास टेन स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस सेशन इज फॉर इंग्लिश एंड फॉर द क्लास टेन स्टूडेंट्स एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड अ पोएम अमेंडा अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड एप्रिशिएटिंग द पोएम and to teach this subject this poem we uh, have our expert in the studio our expert is miss sunita chauhan ma'am welcome ma'am bahut bahut swagat hai aapka namaskar thank you namaskar sabhi ko and a very good afternoon to all my students who are watching us online thank yes, you yes ma'am ma'am is mentor teacher from department of education delhi so dear students get ready to uh, learn this poem understand this poem amanda and dear students today's session is for class 10 students as i have earlier told you that and uh, you can send your feedbacks your queries on our various medium you can contact us through our phone number that is 8800440559 and you can also email us on our email id our id is dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in and dear students before we start this uh, session we want to share a very important message regarding g20 we are proud that india assumed the g20 presidency and will convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding pragmatic global solution for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest the true spirit of vasudev kutumbakam or the world is one family so now we going to begin this session and we move to our expert sunita ma'am yes ma'am okay yeah great so before starting the session i would like you to just have a look at the screen and show me uh, which emojis you can relate to yeah ma'am there are so many emojis of various uh, emotions right and uh, can you name few for us yeah uh, there is emoji of afraid sadness worry happy and many more ma'am okay so just choose one emoji that you are feeling right now the emotion that you are feeling right now uh, ma'am i am feeling feeling very happy oh that's great and i hope that you remain happy throughout yeah. the session Thank so you, we'll move on to the next slide so uh, this picture has different different images and you have to tell me while watching a certain image what kind of emotion comes to you like hmm. when you you know just see the shopping bags and you have to go to shopping so how do you feel uh, we all feel ma'am very happy of course you feel happy excited right yeah and when you get to eat your favorite ice cream or chocolate what's your reaction at that point of time that time also we are very uh, happy okay great but when you have to study for your exams and prepare for your test mm -hmm. then also your re mood remains happy no uh sometimes happy sometimes nervous or feeling sad so many emotions come ma'am okay that time. great and when you are scolded for something that you've done wrong that time we feel very bad ma'am okay great so these are some of the that our teenagers experience every day in their lives so today's poem amanda is about a teenager girl who is very you know uh, experiences all these emotions intensely at her day to day life and how her mother or her parents reacts to it and how she reacts to their uh, behavior so we'll move on and so this is a poem amanda it is from your text first flight we'll appreciate and understand the text today and i am sunita chauhan i'll be reciting the poem for you and we'll uh, gradually uh, understand what is this poem is all about okay so uh, the objective of this poem is that we uh, at the end of the uh, session the students will be able to recite the poem with proper intonation independently they will be able to comprehend the main idea of the poem and answer the questions in their own language develop an understanding for the various poetic devices that are being used in this poem so before we start the poem let's talk about the uh, poet the poet of this poem is robert clan she is an australian writer she has penned down many different different stories for the children and some of her famous work includes giraffe and uh 
some of her uh, books are listed for the children's award she is a famous writer and we'll get to see one of her writing in this poem this is this poem is about a teenager girl amanda so let's see what amanda has to say what she has to experience yes ma'am so i quickly read out this summary of the poem for you this poem is about a young girl who is continuously reprimanded by her mother about certain do's and don'ts as we all see that the teenagers that uh, they are frequently you know told to do or behave in a certain manner this frequent inference interference makes her unhappy she is told to pay attention to her posture she is reprimanded she is reminded every time to tidy her room to clean her shoes she is forbidden from eating chocolates that she likes but all this while the girl is so uh, irritated that she transforms herself into a own imaginary world she keeps dreaming of a life of freedom where no one nags at her she dreams of drifting peacefully in a sea she imagines herself as a rapunzel who lives in a tower and she promises that she would not let her hair down and will never allow anyone to come to her tower to disturb her throughout the poem her mother wants her to stop behaving in an odd manner she rebukes her for not paying attention to her while she is talking to her her mother is anxious about how others would judge if she remains so grumpy so we'll go to the poem and we'll see okay so i'll recite the poem for you yes ma'am don't bite your nails amanda don't hunch your shoulders amanda stop that slouching and sit up straight amanda there is language emerald sea where the soul inhabitant is me a mermaid drifting blissfully did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your room amanda i thought i told you to clean your shoes amanda I am an orphan roaming the street. I pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet. The silence is golden, the freedom is sweet. And the third stanza, don't eat the chocolate Amanda. Remember your acne Amanda. Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you Amanda? I am Rapunzel, I have not care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I will certainly never let down my bright hair. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. You always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. So this is the poem. I hope you enjoyed the poem. and these are the some of the words that you must have come across the poem when i was reciting it so i'll hmm. quickly just go through the meaning and then we'll go again and revisit the poem so that we can you know uh, understand in detail how each stanza what does it mean and what poetic devices are being used there so some of the new words that has come across in the poem are hunch hunch means to bend when you bend your shoulders like this slouching sitting in a very lazy manner you know when you are just drooping like this and you're hmm. not sitting straight language relaxed drifting to move slowly inhabitant resident blissfully happily hushed quiet tranquil calm sulking be in a bad mood and nagged is to harass so we'll once again revisit the poem together and we will independently discuss each stanza and understand more about it okay so as you clearly see don't bite your nails amanda don't hunch your shoulders amanda stop that slouching and sit up straight amanda the tone here is of authority of mm. you know correcting the behavior of someone so here we assume that the mother is you know shouting at her uh, teenager girl and she is reprimanding her for you know not biting the nails because some of the you know uh kids they have this bad habit of just biting their nails whenever they are anxious whenever they are stressed out so the mother want her to stop that bad habit and she ask her to sit straight because amanda has this bad habit of you know just slouching and you know hunching her mm. shoulders and not sitting up straight so 
uh, this is what her mother wants her to behave in a particular manner because as a mother she is concerned about the upbringing of her child and she wants to do the best of her. So you can see there's a difference. The first four lines are written in a stanza wise form and the last three lines are written in parenthesis. When something is written in parenthesis that are to give extra information to you know emphasis on a particular point. So uh, this poem has a very interesting setting. It is set in two different uh, times. The first four lines are set in a real world where you see a mother you know reprimanding her uh, teenager girl to behave in a certain manner whereas the sentences in the parenthesis are imaginary world mm. this imaginary this fanciful world is being created by amanda herself so whenever she gets mm. scolding from other she she you know just dreams of a beautiful fanciful world mm. where she's all alone so she says there is a language language means relaxed mm. emerald sea the sea is so clear beautiful that the color resembles the color green emerald mm. is a green, green color. color so where the soul inhabitant is me and she says there i just want to be all alone i don't want anyone around me i want to be the only inhabitant of that sea and i want to feel like a mermaid that is drifting be blissfully mm. a mermaid is a mythical figure so uh, she wants to just you know go away from the world of real life where she is being told to behave like that don't do that so she wants a world of herself where she can enjoy her life in stanza 2 again we see that the tone of the uh, narrator is strict did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your i told you to clean your shoes amanda again so many instructions are given to her that she has finished her homework on time did she tidy her room did she clean her shoes again she is not paying any attention to what she is being told and she transforms herself to another world now she is so you can clearly see when she says i am an orphan she she is so annoyed with her parents that she wants to be treated like an orphan she wants her parents should not be there and she wants to roam around the street and she wants to pattern soft dust with hushed hushed means quiet bare feet the silence is golden the freedom is sweet she wants to she always longs for that freedom that silence because in the real world she has been constantly asked to do something and not to do something so she is like she wants some silence and peace in her life hmm. stanza 3 again the mother is worried about the teenager girl uh, the way she looks you know her health and her well being and she again says don't eat that chocolate amanda Remember your acne, Amanda. As teenagers, kids, if they have more chocolates and sweets, mm -hmm. they get those pimples and acne on their face. So acne is basically a pimple. So will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? And the child is so frustrated that she's not even making an eye contact with the mother mm -hmm. when she's talking to her. She just goes back to her own world. And now she thinks herself as a yeah. Rapunzel. So Rapunzel here is a fairy tale character and she was very beautiful. She was under the spell of a witch and she had those golden beautiful hair. And mm. she wants that she should also become a Rapunzel and I have not a care and she, she has not to worry about anything. Life in Tar is tranquil and rare and she wants ke life there becomes tranquil, peaceful for her and rare because everyone doesn't want to... Uh, be in a tower she, she wants to live this rare life where she's all alone in the tower and i will certainly never let down my bright hair and she says that she doesn't want to let her hair down so that anyone climbs up mm. and come and destroys her peace of mind in stanza four stop that sulking at once amanda sulking is when you are in a very bad mood and you know just you just that shows in your face you're always so moody, Amanda. The mother is concerned that the child is not happy. She's always moody. She's always sulking. She's always making faces. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. Now the mother is concerned about her image in the society. Not the child, even the adults get this pressure of the society. She also thinks that if someone comes and hears that I'm nagging at my daughter, what they would think of me? Because in society, we are perceived by the way we behave, the way we talk. So she is also concerned. So in this poem, we see that throughout all these stanzas, there are two types of settings. One is the real setting where the mother is, you know, constantly asking the child to behave in a certain manner. 
and the other setting that is given in the parenthesis, the brackets, where the child transforms herself into an imaginary world where mm. she wants to, you know, just close all the windows of the real world and want to have a very peaceful, very calm, very happy life for herself. So every poem is uh, a beautiful poem when some poetic devices are used in it and Robin Klein has also used some of the poetic devices to make this poem more impactful and so some of the poetic devices that are used in this are anaphora. Anaphora is poetic devices when repeated use of a word at the start of two or more lines. We will see that in uh, stanzas. We'll go back and visit and see how the poetic devices are beautifully used in this poem. Another one is alliteration. Alliteration is when a sound is repeatedly used and closely placed in a sentence. We'll also see its example in uh, stanzas. Other poetic device that is being uh, repeatedly used in this poem is allusion, where we give the reference of a famous person or a thing that in this poem, the allusions of Mermaid and Rapunzel as we just uh, listen to the poem. Another one uh, poetic device that is beautifully used throughout the poem is metaphor. Metaphor is used for making comparisons. And one more poetic device is that is used throughout the poem is repetition. So we'll go once again and visit the stanzas and understand how these poetic devices are used in the poem. So in stanza one, as I told you, anaphora is when a same word is used in the start of two or three lines. So don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Now the word don't, don't. is anaphora. Which poetic hmm. device? Anaphora. anaphora. Yes. And in the same stanza, one more poetic device is used and that is stop that slouching mm. and sit up straight. Can you see the word S is being repeated throughout the sentence? Mm. S, stop, slouching, S, sit, S, straight, S. Yes. So the same word is being used. So this is called alliteration. Mm. When the same letter sound is used again and again in the same sentence, it is called alliteration. Okay. And in this, one more uh, poetic device is used that is a reference to a famous uh, uh, mythical figure, mermaid. Mermaid mm. is supposed to be half human and half mm. fish. So the girl thinks herself as a mermaid. mermaid. And as we see, Amanda, Amanda word is repeated, repeated. again and again. Mm. So all uh, those four, five poetic devices that we learned are being beautifully used in this stanza. Mm. Now we'll go back and see what poetic device is used in stanza two. So can you tell me, did and did yeah uh, did and did two lines are uh, did and did repeated, is repeated. Huh? so this is anaphora, anaphora. and uh, and metaphor is uh, freedom in sweet silent is good, wonderful uh, that I means you <laughs> listen to me carefully very good so the silence is golden and the freedom is sweet it's a metaphor hmm. because she is comparing the silence to golden and Freedom is considered as sweet because in the real life, she longs for that freedom. She is mm. constantly, you know, called at. She is constantly reprimanded. She is constantly pointed out. Mm. So she wants to be in a place where she feels that silence. Mm. So this metaphor is beautifully used by the poet. And, and again, then, repetition is there because word Amanda, Amanda mm. is used. Now we'll go and look what poetic devices are being used in stanza 3. So in stanza 3, again, we'll get to see that Amanda is repeated, repeated and, and uh, there is a reference to Rapunzel. Rapunzel. So that's allusion. Mm. When there's a reference to a mm. mythical figure, Rapunzel was a fairy tale character, mm. very famous fairy tale character where she has golden hair and the, mm. she was under the uh, spell of a witch. So uh, this uh, is a poetic device that was used here. And in the last stanza, We have alliteration. Hmm. Stop that sulking. So S sound hmm, is being repeated sound. here. So and again, Amanda is also repeating. Yeah. So that is called repetition. Hmm. Which hmm. poetic device is that? Repetition. repetition. So I hope you understood the poem well. Hmm. So we'll go and quickly do some comprehension questions to check whether you understood the poem or not. So the first question for you is in the poem, her parents are continuously dash. Amanda. Hmm. What are they doing? The options uh. are motivating, encouraging, disappointing, reprimanding. Mm. Can I tell? Yes. I think reprimanding. 
Yes, they are constantly asking her to behave hmm. in a certain manner. So they are constantly reprimanding her. And the second question is, what does Amanda like to do in Emerald Sea? She wants to go there to learn swimming. No. Or she wants to just feel like a mermaid. To feel like a mermaid. Or she wants to drift peacefully. Or she wants to hide herself from her mother. I think drift uh, to feel like a mermaid. Yeah, so, yeah hmm. she wanted to be a mermaid, but she just wanted to drift peacefully, peacefully because she was annoyed hard. with the sound, hmm. you know, the constant voice of her mother, you know, asking her to behave in a certain manner. So she just wanted to drift, drift peacefully, peacefully in the sea. The third question is, lay, uh, name the poetic device used in the line, silence is golden. So hmm. is it smiley, uh, sorry, simile, alliteration, metaphor or personification? It is metaphor. Okay, it's metaphor. You're right. So metaphor is used when we compare two hmm. things. So silence there is compared to being golden. Hmm. The fourth question is, pick out the word from the poem which means same as wandering. It is, I think, roaming. You are absolutely right. It's roaming because she wants to roam hmm. like an orphan where nobody hmm. is going to, you know, ask her to sit down mm. to study to behave in a certain manner so she just wants to be an orphan who roams around without any purpose so wonderful it means that you were very attentive throughout the class thank you so much thank you ma'am and uh, so our this students is, are also attentive and yeah exactly hope that uh, they are also uh, right, right. sending some feedback yeah sure sure and we look forward to see your feedback and this is a small homework for you mm. i hope you understood the poem well and this is a short homework for you you, as we've just discussed the word meaning and the poetic devices used and we've seen the rhyming scheme also. So you need to write a short poem to describe your feeling using the rhyming words and the poetic devices. You may also use uh, the certain words that we've been given to you, dream, scream, aspire, desire, whatever, whatever words that suits your mood and that describes your feeling, you can use them. So this is a small homework for you. So we'll just go back and quickly see the poetic dev uh, devices we've already done. Rhyming scheme is the... Yes, ma'am. So, ma'am, uh, it's time to wind up this session. It was very beautiful poem. And you explained so beautifully to our students and learners, ma'am. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everyone understood yes, the poem well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. And dear students and learners, uh, before we wind up this session, we want to share a very important message regarding NCRT books. It's very important for you, all children and dear parents. NCRT books for 2023-24 are available throughout the country. These textbooks may be purchased directly from NCRT sale counters located at New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Kolkata and Guwahati. These sale counters will be functional on all the weekdays, including gazetted holidays, Saturdays and Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. You may also place order for the books online from our website ncrtbooks.ncrt.gov.in and these books will be delivered at your doorsteps with no delivery fee. And if you want the soft copy of all the books in PDF version, can also be downloaded for free from NCRT, Diksha and e Parshala website and mobile app. Please visit the website ncrt.nic.in to know more about the authorized vendors. So dear students and learners, it's time to uh, wind up this session and uh, we want to say that uh, after this session, there is a session for class 9 students mathematics and the chapter is number system part 1. So stay connected to eVidya channels. Namaskar.